So I started writing a fresh chapter, which is my blog, uh, when I was nearing the end of treatment for breast cancer. And what really inspired the blog and the travel I've been able to do is this idea that treatment doesn't end when you leave the hospital. And how do you help, how did I get the help I needed to move forward? How could we inspire other people to think about what the next chapter in their lives look like? And so the inspiration was really about how do you start fresh when you can't go back to who you were before you found out the news. How did you get the support that you needed after treatment? I really struggled with that. I really, because I didn't even realize that I needed support. I didn't know that other people struggled with depression or isolation when treatment ended. So I didn't even know to Google survivorship. And so truly I, I was just really searching for something to make me feel inspired again. And it was in that idea of what could inspire me that I ended up going to Africa because I, I figured that something as big as a volunteer trip in Africa would help inspire me and might help me start a new story in my life. And it was truly the inspiration that I got from volunteering in a daycare there and traveling to Victoria Falls, which was a bucket list dream of mine. That inspiration and that feeling of, okay, maybe I can't go back to who I was, but I can, I can reinvent myself. I wanted to help other survivors have that. What do you think it was exactly about the trip that inspired you so much? I think it was a combination of things. I think it was the ability to travel thousands of miles away from where I was sick. So I had no reminders of hospital visits or doctor's appointments. I met strangers and they didn't know me. They didn't expect me to go back to who I was before. So I had this opportunity to practice. Who am I now outside of treatment? Who am I now in my new life? And then I had this huge perspective shift. I'd been really stuck in the drama of my story because I was 30 and I was diagnosed with aggressive cancer and I was really angry about it. And then I spent time in, in Africa and I thought, wow, you know, we all struggle. We all have issues and challenges and I should actually be really grateful. I'm alive, I'm here, I live in North America, I have the opportunity to reinvent myself. And so it was that combination of getting out of my story, taking care of this beautiful group of children that helped me feel like I had a purpose again, and then meeting people who allowed me to just be who I was in that moment. And how do you think your experiences have helped you help others deal with their survivorship? I think it's really hard to explain survivorship to somebody who hasn't experienced it because it doesn't even make sense rationally, rationally to me, and I've been through it. And so I think because I know how many people feel in terms of the isolation, the depression, the fear that the cancer is going to come back. I've been able to help them think about their lives in terms of possibility and to say, okay, well, you can't control whether the cancer will come back. You can't control um, whether you've had these surgeries that have left you um, with challenges that you never expected, but you can control what you do today. And so I think that ability to live in the moment myself has helped me help other people do it. And not everybody needs to go to the developing world. And I think that's where blogging has been really powerful for me. Because if I could tell a story and someone could say, oh, how does that relate in my life? Maybe I don't want to go to Africa, but maybe I want to learn to be a better photographer. Or maybe I want to take ballroom dancing. And maybe that's possible for me. Because if Terry can go to Africa, or you know, if, if Sue can go to India, what could I do? The story about inspiration and kind of rebuilding yourself up after having kind of gone through a lot. Absolutely, and, and, and about having a new adventure because it's really hard, I think, with, with any illness, um, it's really hard to move out of that being your story if nobody builds a bridge for you. So this is just one way to build that bridge between who you were and who you could be. And tell us a little bit about your foundation. So the Fresh Chapter Alliance Foundation was built out of this desire to help other cancer survivors start fresh. And so we, uh, in February of this year, we piloted a two-week program in India. So we took 12 survivors, all different types of cancer, from all over North America, and they joined us for two weeks in India. We volunteered uh, with community projects. We partner with a very well-established international volunteer organization. So they got to volunteer and do meaningful work, and then we took them to see the Taj Mahal. Oh, wow. So, so it was like a mini re recreation of your experience exactly. in Africa. Absolutely. So it was a two-week experience of that, and it was so powerful to see the impact that it had on our survivors because it wasn't just the impact that they experienced in India. I've seen the ripple impact of it. 
Um, we had an artist who hadn't painted since she'd been diagnosed with Ewing sarcoma, who came back so inspired that she did a whole show in New York about her cancer journey. So she's been raising awareness about young adult cancer, and she's been painting from the hospital because she had a recurrence. And so that type of ripple impact is so important. Um, and, and so now we're looking at how do we offer that to survivors who maybe aren't stable with their health enough to travel internationally, or that might be too big of a leap. And so we're looking at a pilot program that we want to run here in California that would be a three-day program incorporating two days of volunteering and a bucket list experience or a once-in-a-lifetime type of, type of experience. Because the two, the two um, emotions that I really want survivors to have is I want them to feel like, hey, my life matters. And even if I'm sick still or I don't know how much time I have, I can do meaningful things while I'm here. And the other emotion that I really love to see them experience is, hey, I feel lucky. Yeah, you know, I, yeah, I, I've had cancer and it's awful, but I got to see the Taj Mahal. Mm -hmm. Or I got to go on a safari in Africa. Or I got to meet a really prominent uh, celebrity who's been through cancer and who knows how I feel. And we can connect human to human. And so that ability to create those experiences for survivors, I think, is just one way to build that bridge and help them start fresh. You're really giving them, these survivors, a sense of living and an, a new appreciation for living. And I think that's very, very admirable. Thank um, you. Thank you so much for sitting with us. And it was very wonderful to hear your story. Thank you. It was my pleasure.